What's up everybody and welcome to episode 5 of the Muscle Business Podcast. Now for those of you that don't know and haven't tuned in, first why? And second, the whole concept with this is we talk about anything that's related to fitness, business, money, power, whatever, with people that hopefully know what they're on about. Okay. Now, if you hear stuff in the background, for those of you that don't know, this is a working gym. We walk the walk and talk the talk, and if you hear stuff going on in the background, it's because it's a real life gym. So that's the concept of it. Now, today, we're going to talk to this guy, okay? His name's Drew. We'll get to it, but he's an online coach. Ooh, okay? <laughs> Ooh. The good, the bad, and the ugly are all going to be discussed today. But before we get into it, the coffee. So. The coffee that we've got today is courtesy of these guys. They are a local Gloucester outfit, JR Coffee. And this is their whiskey barrel coffee. Um, Yeah, Angel Share. So, Steve, how the hell did you brew this one? Uh, Well, I didn't. (laughs) So basically what happens is the beans are harvested, the beans are dried out, and then they are stored in used whiskey barrels for two months before they're roasted. Right. So... Uh, JR Coffee, they've got uh, four different flavours in this at the moment, four different offerings. Uh, this is meant to be one of the stronger ones. <laughs> Judging by your face, you're not impressed. No, you can't, you can't, no, I'll, I'll get to that, don't you worry, okay. you tell us all about it. Um, so, yeah, so uh, they've, they've uh, asked us to try this coffee, give it a go, give my opinion. Uh, I've explained to them I'm by no means an expert, but uh, I know what I like, and I've sort of got a bit of knowledge that I can help nice. guide them along the way and suggest any changes that they might need. So you thought we were a good sampling panel. I know yeah. a load of guys that review coffee every episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of them doesn't even like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, for those of you that, yeah, for those of you that don't know and haven't seen this before, the whole premise is Ryan hates coffee. Ryan is forced to drink a coffee every episode and then rates it. So far, we've had nothing above a zero. <laughs> no. Um, so we're looking for our first one. Can no. it be local outfit JR Coffee? Who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, we'll get proper reviews in. We'll do scores on the doors in a second. But before we we do that let's just give drew a proper intro so uh, i've known drew for a little while he is a pt at time performance as well as running his own business both online and in person um yeah and he's also a uh, a hybrid athlete and boy i think he'll tell us more about what he means by that in a minute but you know from from my understanding he does a little bit of everything Absolutely. he does some weights he does some some long distance stuff some medium distance stuff he likes it all but what we're really interested to hear about today is the online side of stuff as well but yeah that's a brief intro drew thank you for coming along dude Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to diving into all things coaching online, face to face and getting into it. All the fun stuff. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So basically that's the concept of today. So yeah, I guess, look, let's so just... It, I think there actually is whiskey in it. Uh, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> is that? Do you yeah. But, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's just from the fumes. Just from the fumes. It does. It's going so downhill. You can yeah. smell yeah. it yeah. straight away. We will, yeah. We will do scores in a minute. We'll yeah. get a few sips first. Um, I'll just kick it off straight off the bat. So... Um, Obviously, you've got a panel here of guys that have uh, currently own a gym, owned a gym in the past, and, and other PTs and stuff, and actually other online coaches, because our sound engineer, um, that is his, his job as well. He is an online coach. But online coaching can get a bad rap. Um, some people love it. Some people hate it. It's basically Marmite Absolutely. Right? when it comes to fitness. Um, I guess the thing that people are intrigued by is a why do you do it so for you is it a passion, is it a passion thing do you do it because you like coaching and if so why do you do more online than than physical um and b like what's the career press prospects in that what's the what's the moolah what's the dollar like like is it, <laughs> i mean <laughs> i think this answer your second question i think that's a reason that it seems quite attractive for a lot of people there seems to be a, a perception that online coaching is the best way to make a lot of money uh, in the fitness industry which can be true but that can be true with any kind of direction or avenue you decide to go down you know there's there's successful people in in all walks of of the fitness industry whether you'd want to be a a personal trainer a a business owner you've got the good side and the bad side of all of that Um, and I feel like especially during COVID I think the coaches who coach online coaches have used that in their marketing to make online coaching this world of you know 10k months seems to be the 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 be all and end all kind of figure that, that coaches can make um, 
but definitely with that there, there comes challenges as with any kind of path you decide to go down um, but to answer your first question in terms of why I decided to go down this route I think for me it comes down to the freedom aspect of it so typically looking at businesses you're looking at making an impact you're looking at making money so you can put food on the table and you look at having having freedom outside of that business right um, and as we know as, as trainers personal training can be and this works for a lot of people it can it can be quite you can be quite tied down with you know if you're if you're a successful trainer and you're doing let's say 30 to 40 sessions a week you know your time is limited or your you know your freedom is limited to that time you have to give to those clients um, and that works for some people and that's absolutely great you know there's always going to be that demand for one-to-one -one training um, but for me personally that freedom aspect of, of it was really attractive um, so you know that kind of laptop lifestyle um, you know traveling is, is one of the things I enjoy doing so being able to look after a team of clients while still having that freedom to move around be in places um, and you've got the other kind of logistical side of things where overheads can, they can be a lot leaner. Um, you can attract a wider range of, of an audience, which again is a, is a big thing for me. Um, really niching down into that hybrid world now. Um, obviously being in a gym, you're, you're kind of restricted by the demographic of that gym. So let's say we're in Gloucester, we're restricted to the people who live in Gloucester, which again can work really fantastically for some people. Um, but online you can you can reach worldwide which again is another attractive point of it so you've always got pros and cons which i'm sure we're going to jump into uh, following on from this um but th those are the main reasons for me i think yeah yeah it's interesting isn't it because obviously we, we've got a panel of four people here some some of which are pro online some of which are, are not pro online because um, <laughs> you're not pro online um, and it's I understand at the end of the day every business has a timeline which is exponentially longer than people think it is right so online coaching isn't new and it's not going to go anywhere that's the thing we've got to appreciate and understand and when you look at that and you realize that I think you understand that actually there is a place for it because there are age groups and there are demographics of people that you know what it works for them and the world that we live in now means that it works for them yeah. but equally if something's around long enough it's going to gain haters as much as it's going to gain lovers so that's the whole concept isn't it so no no I'm going to hand it over to Steve because Steve I mean I'm I'm 50/50 right? right you know that yep. I hate a lot of online coaches. Mm -hmm. and I don't use the word hate lightly, and I mean it. <laughs> and I'll list them at the end if you want, guys, and you can shout me on DMs because I hate you. Okay. Um, but equally, some of them, I get it. Okay. Mm. I would say you're you're more not a fan. Um, yes, uh, and no offense to you. No, you know, we've there, interacted, and I've, I've seen the way you interact uh, face to face with your clients. Yeah. Um, but I I think it comes from. Uh, a lifetime, really, of being yeah. hands-on in, in the gym, and I just don't get how I don't get how people can train in their living room with limited equipment. Get close to the mic, sorry, dude. Moving Steve close to the mic. In your living room. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I don't understand how people can train in the living room and get good results. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen the way you train. You've seen the way I train. Uh, and you know we're both pretty hardcore in what we do. Um, you know I'm impressed with some of the stuff you've done because I follow your Instagram obviously. Yeah, thank you. I'm impressed with the stuff you do. It's incredible. I couldn't do it, but it doesn't appeal course, to yeah. me in that respect. But I just don't get how you can be. And no, again, no offence, but how you can be 20 miles away on the end of a laptop and yeah. some old dear in a lounge doing. Absolutely. So I, yeah, it, it, it's Paul that. Betty. Well, Betsy, yeah. <laughs> but Agnes, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know whether it's just the way I train and the way I can be dismissive of. Yeah. Uh, as I've said before, you know, I'll see a, somebody in the gym, they will be training for a year, and they don't look any different. Yeah. So absolutely. you know, how how can somebody get those results after when they're not physically with you and for yeah. you to be pushing them properly and you yeah. know, instructing them? That's a, that's definitely a big change. Um, I had to kind of come to because obviously 
having worked on the gym floor, having that face-to-face -face contact, and mm. even now, like it was a transition I was hesitant to make because you just you can't beat that face-to-face -face contact with someone. Because I, I always say to great people, uh, to people, you can have a great training plan, but if it's not being executed to perfection, yeah. you're not you're not going to make very good results. And that's why I say, you know, keep keep things simple. Because the better you do something, the better results you're going to get with it. Mm. Um, and there's nothing like having that face-to-face -face contact with someone and saying, all oh, right, we'll just just retract the shoulder blades a little bit more to get more from that pull. Or, you know, you just want to extend that range of motion slightly or just slow down the tempo. Mm. Um, you know, that, that's going to yield great results. So I think online coaching in that sense, as a, as a consumer perspective, isn't for everyone. Um, and that's where I think as a coach, you're kind of responsible for who you take on. Um, and, and having those boundaries and guidelines as to say, you know, this isn't for everyone. Um, but with the systems we have in place, we're looking, we're looking to fit that. You know, you wouldn't put a, a round plug in a square hole. Um, so we're looking to, to find people who, who match this model. So like, for example, like you said, I wouldn't expect you to want to go run triathlons and, and things like that or, or vice versa. Um, so that's where kind of the niche aspect comes in, which again, I'm sure we'll talk about in the future. Um, but the way the kind of online coaching model works, particularly for myself and a lot of people I know, yes, you've, you've got the model where trainers will do like zoom sessions and living room things like that and again that appeals to you know like joe wicks for example is a, is a great great I'm example of that you. yeah um so yeah he, he's, he's yeah. definitely rustled a few feathers in the, within the <laughs> fitness industry um but that, that's pretty much the you know he he's attracted to um you know working mums stay-at-home parents things like that. people who just want to jump around the living room get a sweat on which is great you know there, there, there's a there's a place in the market for that um the model I run is a bit more towards um, you know people who are experienced in the gym and, and don't need don't necessarily need you there you know to 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 correct the form and things like that they more so need a system to follow so you know particularly for my demographic is, is hybrid athletes who want to get stronger and want to increase their endurance so they're typically people who have been training for a while mm. you know they they know the fundamentals the squat bench dead and, and you know movement execution they, but they need a system to follow they need to know when to do things and and how to do things outside of the training so mm. that may look like you know my program in particular is, is off five pillars so we've got we got training nutrition which is where most people look at them. We've also got sleep, mindset, and your recovery. Right. So th th those five pillars are kind of what we kind of <clears throat> put into a system to follow to help improve their results within their training. So, you know, we look at models in terms of like, you know, your sleep, your recovery, um, giving, giving people nutrition framework. So it's very much kind of what's going on outside of the gym as well as what you're doing within the gym. Um, yeah, so th there's different kind of models to follow, but absolutely agree with the sense that you know, being coming from face to face myself as well, and still still having an aspect of my business which is face to face, you, you can't get that, those touch points through your laptop. No. Um, and there, that's that there's you know there's always going to be a place for one to one training because of that. You know, people like people and people buy people. Mm. Um, so with the PT industry. Yeah. So within the PT industry, yeah, no, there's there's definitely there's always going to be a place for that. Um, you know, especially for people who maybe are a little bit on the newer side of things, maybe maybe lacking a little bit of confidence, not been into the gym environment before. You know, they need someone there to guide them through that process. And mm. you know, even if it's not that, they are experienced, but they want someone. You know, just you know, you get people who are busy. They just want to come off to the gym, let off some steam. And I think you agree, Ben and, and Ryan as well as as a, as a trainer. You're very mu very much there to be soundboarded to as you are to help them through their exercise, you know. Um, so you know you just can't be that, I think. Um, so I think that very much depends on the consumer side of things, what you're looking for from a coach, and you know that's where one to one online, you know, they clash heads a little bit for sure. How? Um, let's let's talk about disillusion then, right? Yeah. So um, don't want to sound like father time because I am an old man now but I have been in this game a very long time and you know I'm, I'm, I've am i seen it all right I've seen the people that go I'm going to be an online coach I'm going to earn six figures I'm going to buy a Lambo and a house in Malibu that's that's the picture shut up painted. no you're not yeah. all right um, and then six months later they're you know I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and they're magpies we talked on the show about magpies before <laughs> latest shiny thing chase it that's standard that's shiny object do. syndrome for sure I think online coaching, in my experience, I've seen it so many times, is the biggest one where people buy into it and then six months later, the curtain is peeled back and they become disillusioned with it. Now, as someone that I know, um, you know, would dive into it more later, but I know that your career 
path is changing mm. and you might be moving away from coaching specifically into other things yeah. so you're probably at a point now where you'll talk more more openly about it For sure but when you started out I'm pretty sure your opinion of what online coaching was going to be is a lot different to what it is now you might be leaving it 100% so like how, how have you found that how have you found the disillusion how have you found it having the curtain pulled away and realizing that it's not everything it was cracked up to be? oh yeah 100% and, and like you said there's <laughs> the, I think online world is is painted to be you know this beach lifestyle open up your laptop yeah, of course it is you can work from anywhere that's yeah. right you know anywhere do, do, with a do, a, do, do a few programs <laughs> here and there and but other than that you're good to just hop on a plane go wherever you, wherever you want in the world and um yep. you know clients come flooding in as soon as you put something as soon in as you buy a vlog up you get yeah. 25 as, as soon as you get a professional photo shoot write a couple of blogs and uh you know write something in your instagram bio and, and put out that you're looking for five clients online that they come flooding in and you know the sad reality of that is that it's just not true um, so you know just like with, with any business it, it has its stress hmm. um, I would even go as far to say sometimes it's, it's probably more stressful and it's actually more difficult to grow than a face to face business because you haven't got that connection there yeah. and especially with today's world everyone being very very uh quick to scroll past things you know everyone's got a very short attention span and I'm, I'm yeah. guilty of that myself if something doesn't capture, capture my attention it's within gone. the split second that is on my phone screen it, it is gone so you're constantly battling against that you're battling to get more uh, against more other people um, you know and you may be in a gym where you've got five other trainers and 4,000 members your chances of, of making a successful business are quite high because yeah. you can talk to people and develop those relationships but Instagram the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the online world is, is a big place <laughs> you know I, I don't even know the numbers but I'd want to say there's there's probably close to 1 billion people on Instagram um, yeah. you know where, where are you gonna find your clients there and how do you connect with those people well how do you find those people how do you get those people to know like and trust you yeah um, and if you're not specific with your message and you don't know you know who you're gonna attract in the first place you'll you'll be you'll be talking to no one uh, and you'll be you'll, you'll be an unheard voice, and you will, and you know you'll go through phases where you feel like you're not talking to anyone. You know, you put a post out, and you think, oh, this is a great post, it gets no likes or it gets no traction, or you know, you put on your story, um, oh, I've got these spaces available, or opening up this spot, or I've just made this ebook, or just made this program, no one buys it. No. And I, I feel like every every business has phases like that. You go go through dry phases, um, but it's yeah, it's a very humbling reality to come across. You know, especially with this online world being painted as yeah, 10k months and things like that. You know, that's just a number that people throw out there. Retire at 27. Almost as, yeah, almost <laughs> as arbitrary as, as 10k steps. Um, yeah. But it, it's one of those. Yeah, it's it, it's extremely humbling. Um, and you know, it, it's a completely different ball game. It's the yeah. same principles, but yeah, it's a different ball yeah, game when it comes to making money and you know having a sustainable, profitable business that can that can grow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and serve clients. It's um. It's an interesting one, isn't it? That you can only really like most industries. You can only really pass a judgment on it when you've been in it long enough to know it. Yeah. Like being in a job or being in a role for a couple of months isn't knowing it. Living it for years and doing it is knowing it. Yeah. And then you can pass a judgment on it. And it's, yeah. it's easier for us to all do that now. We've Not, been in it a while. I think but. it's um, it's becoming almost a bit crazy as well. And some people will agree with me here, but others maybe won't. And I think you guys definitely will. But online coaching is almost just becoming the natural stepping stone as, as instead of being a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, it's get your qualification, get on the gym floor, have the face-to-face -face contact, earn your stripes, and then you can look at online coaching. Because without, without that gym floor experience and without putting those systems into place, how do you know what fucking works? So you can, you can get your qualification and go, right, I'm gonna go online, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna teach lads how to build muscle. Like, okay, well, what, what are you saying up there? How do you know that works? Oh, because I learned it in a book. Like, okay, well, what happens when that person's not following your program? Or what happens when, um, you know, that person doesn't stick to the diet that you've, that you've recommended to them? Um, whereas I feel like that experience you get on the gym floor is second to none because you're, you're communicating with people yeah. and you, can't, you don't have that communication. If someone responds in a text, like, I even have it in, in my relationship now. Like, I've been with my girlfriend for over two years and she'll say something in a text and I don't know how she's saying it. Yeah. I'm like, well, have you said that in an aggressive way, in a, in a happy way? I mean, and the red font and the capital letters is probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perhaps I should have done mean? that washing up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's so true. But, um, but when yeah, you've got so that true. communication online, you're like, well, this person has said this. That can mean ten different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, you, when you're with someone face to face, you're picking up their body language, how they're saying their tone of voice, and and you know what, how they've said it. If something happens online, or if someone goes cold online, how do you react and deal with those things? And I feel like without earning your stripes on the gym floor 
you're go, you're gonna you know find yourself flat footed a little bit because yeah. how do you respond to those things without that experience in place? Oh, agree. But this is like you know shots fired at the industry. Then we talk about obviously the fact that you should go and get qualified, go and earn stripes, and then try online training. The sad reality is that most of these most of these coaches and gurus aren't even qualified forget Absolutely. stage yeah. one they're not even qualified yeah. okay anybody the worst thing in the world is the fact that on instagram <laughs> you can select yourself as an entrepreneur or yeah? an influencer show, or an influencer yeah oh my god okay. that, that's my personal Good favorite do a few photo shoots get sponsored by boohoo and then come out with a fitness ebook yeah it's the best way yeah it's the best way <laughs> you know it's the best way but I even call the, myself sad, the sad reality is that these people aren't even making money no and, they're and not they, they'll get hit in the face when they put an ebook out and two people buy it two and those people. two people are probably their mum and their, their sister yeah it ain't that easy like you gotta you gotta push it like anything else you gotta ram it down people's throat absolutely and you gotta do it consistently but yeah most of them aren't even qualified are they and i think that's the difficulty you've got that's what you're fighting against now is the fact that actually not only is it a saturated industry but most of the people that are in that industry and that are responsible for the saturation in it aren't even qualified exactly yeah yeah this is the difficulty me and you are into stocks and shares right yep. it's one of our hobbies is what we play around with and i call it a hobby because the level of my income that I put towards it means it's a hobby. Yeah. For those of you that have an eToro account with 200 pounds in and think, no, it's not a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm here to tell you that's a, that's a hobby. Um, now the reality <clears throat> is I can call myself a financial advisor tomorrow. It does not make it true. Right. Okay, I could say I'm a fairy. No, well, yeah. but maybe. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, no, that's it is what it is, convinced. right? But that's what you're fighting against. So Absolutely. like, I guess, I guess we're intrigued by how much does that piss you off? The fact that there are other people that are probably earning more money and more clients and they're nowhere near as qualified. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I know that vexes people. And, um, yeah, I mean, now you're, you know, because, you know, for those viewers that, or people that don't know, so you've been online coaching now for quite a, a few years? Cu yeah. yeah, a couple of years now. I'd and say there's always been an element of my business that's been online. Yeah, but the and model, some physical like, yeah, as well. The model 50, was one-to-one -one is the focus. Yeah. And if someone see, you know, comes across my Instagram profile and wants to work with me but doesn't have the means to be able to, yeah. online is the next option. Whereas I feel like COVID, you know, it either forced a lot of growth or it forced you out yeah. um, you know in, in many businesses and you know everyone who is still here after covid running their own business fair play to you um, so for me that was the turning point of like right we need to, we have to make this work now okay um, and then after the, you know some traction it's like okay we can actually make this work full time yeah um, and, and that's that's been the goal and now you're now you're transitioning away from coaching then so obviously you're going to get into gym management and that's kind right. of being back of office more so so yeah, yeah welcome yeah. to the team back of office <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah, yeah go go admin um but yeah like that's that's an interesting journey isn't it because most people are selling online pt as a retirement plan oh, and yeah. you know this because you've done it now yeah but you ain't going to retire as an online coach no so no. there's no retirement plan there and there's no pension no yeah so yeah so now you're going towards that it's, it's interesting for us to see yeah for sure and there's um you know, th there's money to be made. You know, especially when you look at the online world. Some of the, you know, you get you make money carving shapes out of potatoes and selling to people online. People do that and they make good money of it. But you can't then say everyone's going to make money doing that. Um, so what, yeah, when it comes to that, and going back onto your point about you know people not even being qualified or you know qualified or experienced at a high level but making good money. Um, I think the sad reali reality of that is, you know, you can be the world's best coach. If you don't market yourself, you won't make any money. Yeah. And the vice, you know, the opposite to that is, you can be a pretty shit coach, market, market well. yourself like hell, and make pretty good money from it. Um, yeah. But I think ultimately, you know, that does come back to bite people. And, and those people who are pretty shit coaches, they may be able to make a quick buck, but it does come back around to, you know, uh, when, you, they're, when you, they're dealing with US high... US presidents that have carried <laughs> yeah, it off pretty, yeah, pretty well. Yeah. But, you know, high churn rates, high stress of running the business, um, things like that, you know, it will become evident. And and I feel like this is the same thing happened with COVID as well. You start to ident be, being able to identify who is authentic in the marketplace and, and who isn't. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, with COVID, you know, you could see the personal trainers quickly jump ship. Yeah. But then, then that kind of proves the point. It's, in my eyes, you guys may, may disagree, but they're jumping ship straight away it's because they don't believe that personal training is is their true career path and they're not committed to making that work mm -hmm. or serving others um you know like i'm sure you, you guys being business owners 
you know, this, this is your life and COVID can happen, but it's like, well, I'm going to make this work because it's my passion to do so. Yeah, there yeah, should yeah. be no yeah. plan B. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I feel like people just hop on online coaching, expect it to be easy, then they, they're either gone within a few months or like, well, I'm not making 10K a month now and this is this is shit, so I'm going to go Fuck and do yeah. something else. Yeah. Where's my um, Lambo? Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of people say is all they need to do is make a website on Wix, set up an Instagram account, put some content out people are going to start paying me and you know mm -hmm. that's unfortunately not how it works especially kind of going back to that example of coming from the gym floor if you're going straight to online without that gym floor experience you've got no testimonials you've got no one backing what you do mm. what are you going to put out to people what what reason have people got to to invest in your service if you ha if you can't even if you haven't got any results from it um so yeah it's a it's a big battle to face for sure yeah huge uh before i open the floor to questions from these guys let's before we dive away from it let's talk coffee so let's go around the room in our standard format sound guy sound team what are we saying that's bloody good it's <laughs> bloody yeah. good um, it's our official put a little bit of milk in this one but yeah yeah i, I now prefer it without okay what are we saying i think it's got to be a nine Damn! I don't, know what, I don't know what a 10 is going to be. There's got to be room for error. A 9? That's just really good. It's, 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 it's not, not, a 9's it's not, a solid score. It's a not a weak flavour of whiskey, but it's not overpowering where it's just a novelty. It's nice. It's good. Okay, a nine. A nine is a strong score. Yeah. I'm going to give you fair warning. If you've not had two huge gobs by the time we get round to you, all, all hell's going to break those two. You drink that coffee. Come on. What are we saying? Don't waste that shit. It's good. Don't like oh, oh no, they're not, don't get close to the mic and tell them they're your friends. Oh mate, they're your friends. Disgusting. They're your <laughs> friends, Steve. You know ah. them. Uh, I'm gonna be really controversial. Um, I'm sorry to the guys that have produced this because they are actually friends of mine. Tell them I like it. Honesty is the best part. I don't like it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you be both. It doesn't do anything for me <laughs> at all, apart from giving me stomach acid. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan. Sorry boys. Okay. I like the other one we tried, the, the flat line. Yeah, but no, I like the flat line. Shout out for the flat line. The flat yeah. line was a was a nice. Um, well, you know what I'm like with yeah. the morning coffee. I like a Colombian morning yeah. coffee. The flat line was a nice morning coffee. Yeah, I'll give my score in a minute. What are you going to give score for? Honestly, yeah, give it a month. Uh, I'll, I'll Again, they're it. your they're your friends. They're not <laughs> mine. <laughs> I'm going to give it a three. That I would only drink <laughs> it in an emergency. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, boys. <laughs> okay, uh, Ryan. We've not had anything above a zero from Ryan. So yeah, that's honestly. He's apart definitely from, not like that. Yeah, apart from the one I had in the previous episode. Our previous <laughs> guest is wandering into the studio and waving. Those of you that haven't seen episode four with Stuart Pierce, it can be found on all good podcast distribution channels. And in McDonald's. <laughs> and in McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Uh, yeah, apart from the previous one we had on episode four, where yeah. it had the mushrooms in, yeah, that was the worst one I've ever had. Okay, uh, this one is second to that. Okay, so that will be a zero then. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and what are we saying? I'm saying so. I'm, I'm a I'm a sweet tooth man, right? I like Ooh. my coffee, a bit of sugar. It's quite sweet. Sounds like a ZZ da top dash, song. Dash, dash, dash <laughs> sweet tooth man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sweet tooth man. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> we will grow a beard. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, it's slightly bitter. You can definitely taste the the whiskey there. Um, so for me, having that preference, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to probably go with with a four. Just 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 on that basis, um, for me. Oh. I'm going to give it a six. Okay. And I'm going to say. But no, it's not my favourite by a long shot. You know, like I'm very, you know, I mean, I'm not hating on it as much as some people. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a six. But I'm gonna say, do you know what this would be great for? And again, it, this is shocking for a guy that owns a gym. But this is all about honesty. This podcast. If I'm at a wedding or I'm somewhere like a once, twice maybe a year occasion, I love a cigar. Oh, right. Yeah. That is cigar coffee. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, that is what that is. You need to change the name. <laughs> okay, these guys that are, what's what's the guys? JR Coffee. JR Coffee, but Al, Al, Alex, and, Alex Josh. and Josh. You need to change the name. This Angel Share is officially Cigar Coffee. I'm telling you now. <laughs> okay, you sell that with a Romeo at Juliet, and boom, take my money. But as coffee, I, no, I, I guess I feel that for sure. I like well, you know, I love coffee and I like whiskey. You should hope so. You're a barista. Just, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good start. Uh, it just doesn't work for me, I'm afraid. Nah, fair yeah. enough. 
It's all about honesty. Mm. Maybe when they when they hook you up with their next coffee, it might be a winner. Or they'll never speak to me again. We're going to find out in episode <laughs> six <laughs> of the Muscle Business Podcast. Um, yeah, so cool. We've done the scores on doors for the coffee. There's so many mixed reviews. People have to buy it and try it for themselves. Yeah, yes. but honestly, to be fair, mixed I feel like it's an, it's, yeah. a, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't like whiskey, maybe not the coffee for you. Yeah. Cigar yeah. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, right, questions then. Fire uh, away. So... Do you think the industry is currently saturated with youngsters who see it as an easy way to make big money? Yes, 100%. Um, saturated, I feel like, is a very subjective word. Um, I feel like it's definitely saturated with people trying to make quick, easy money, for sure. Um, but this this is where, um, you know, it's kind of staying in your lane comes in quite handy because you, you asked earlier, like, what's my opinion on people like jumping in and stuff? Yes, it's frustrating. Um, but like I said, it, those people have got more coming to them. And if you kind of waste your energy focusing on that, getting frustrated about that, you know, it's the same probably as thing, you know, you know, people think I'm going to open up a gym, I'm going get, to get, 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 get a commercial unit and put some kit in there. It's going to, people are going to flood in I'm going to make quick easy profit um so i feel like you've got to focus on what you do best and focus on who you speak to and, and that's where you know that's where the niche come in um but yeah it's definitely saturated people trying to make money but again from a consumer perspective it should be quite easy to see through that so you just kind of it's one of these things you got to let these people figure it out for themselves and and you can you can very easily tell again who's being authentic who is here for for the short term and who's actually doing it because they live breathe it and, and it's their passion, mm. and, you know, and you can quickly see when people are putting up, you know, gym selfies, talking about themselves, you know, and, and as a consumer, if you are watching this, thinking about hiring a coach online, um, you know, what are they talking about in their content? Are they trying to solve your problems, or are they just trying to big themselves up? And I think that, that that's quite easy as a consumer to, to, to sift through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, um, I have a bit of a bugbear. Uh, I'm not sure if we've actually spoken about this, but I'm not a fan of PTs in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're honest. This is, this is <laughs> every single one of us is exactly why he's here. He yeah. doesn't like coffee and he doesn't <laughs> like PTs. <laughs> yeah. Tell the yeah. people, Steve. But yeah, you know, I, I used to. I, I was a qualified PT myself, so I kind of, I, you know, years and years ago. Um, but my my thing is, if I see a 19, 20 year old lad trying to instruct a 30, 40 year old guy, yeah. Um, yep. It just doesn't, doesn't, you know, the, the, the young lad hasn't got any, like Absol- you said before, absolutely, yeah. no experience, no No, no life base. experience at yeah, that yeah. point either. Yeah, no, I, no I've, I've definitely been guilty of that before. Um, you know, I've even witnessed conversations on the gym floor like, oh, it's all right, John, just uh, make sure you meal prep. Don't worry about your three kids and your, you know, your, your 60 hours a week <laughs> job. Just just got to prep your meals, mate. You just got to make the time. Mm. It's like, that's not very good advice. No, for us. <laughs> coming, good that's, that's fine coming from a 19-year-old lad who's, yeah, yeah. yeah who's just, you know, in the Literally gym. Was dad, that, that's right, yeah, yeah, doesn't have a mortgage and, and all of that. Um, <clears> so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and again, I feel like, you know, there's definitely... Um, that you know, there's experience to be had, and there's there's lessons to be learned, and you know, s- some some younger guys c- can be on it, um, but again, I think feel like that's it's, it's definitely accountability on the coach's side of things to, you know, wise up a little bit and actually have a look at the big world world and how real people function mm-hmm. and you know what goes on in their lives and you know cater your service towards that and not just say oh it's all right you know just just don't buy takeaways. It's like okay, well, <laughs> it's not as black and white as that. You know, and there's you know people in the industry. Oh, just yeah, calorie deficit. So well, there's many different mechanisms to a calorie deficit. So how are you going to make that work for people? Um, but yeah, going from that, I think also just you know from a from a consumer perspective, if you are looking for a coach, you know try and find someone who does align with your values because I think feel like that's something in the commercial gym space that, that people can be guilty of is just saying right, okay, you're a number coming into the gym. We'll put you with this trainer because he's free. Um, and then they end up with a with a massive clash of values and, and personalities, yeah. and it doesn't work. So I feel like you definitely have to do your homework. Like you wouldn't just go into a, a car like a, a car shop and say, just give me a car. The, the guy's going to be asking like, what car are you looking for? Is it SUV? Is it is, is it a hatchback? You know, you need lots of miles, or do you want something fast? Like, and then you need to, yeah, you need to find that that coach who's you know, going to be aligned with you and your values and, and your mission, your your yeah. kind of goals. For sure. I would just like to make one point. I don't disrespect the industry of PTs. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. It's just a number of the individuals yeah. that uh, seem to be... I've uh, witnessed that, and I've probably yeah. been guilty of that before myself. And I feel like whilst it's something that's, that's 
probably not great it is also maybe a necessary learning curve for oh, some yeah. people mm. yeah absolutely um yeah. you know I, I feel like it, it's it's definitely good when you know clients question you um you know i, I still get it today and you know i, I love being questioned on what, what i'm doing because coming from an evidence-based background from university if i, if I can't back what i'm doing mm. then I, i've got to question myself as to why i'm doing it yeah. so if you know someone is saying you just got to prep your meals you just got to find time to do it if, if someone's saying that to you you've got to call them out and it would be like okay well how how do you want me to do that if i've got this x y and z going on and then that if that person is accountable coach they'll take that and be like okay yeah you're right perhaps we need to think of something else here mm. and that's only as a coach perspective it's only going to help you widen your skill set yeah it's only yeah, going to benefit you mm. yeah one of the things that um, reinforces my dislike of pds is the fact that the uh, the commercial gym i use i have literally witnessed a pt on his phone yeah watching youtube videos of somebody training and again his client to copy what he's watching that's on youtube learning on the job yeah <laughs> we've all well, done again, that you know, that's one of the young lads over there yeah uh, i don't think he's actually there anymore but right. he's then gone on to write a blog do a podcast and think that he's the next joe wicks yeah but it's like you're an 18 year old lad you're watching youtube and getting your client to do what you're watching on youtube and then you're just printing off a generic yeah. diet, a generic training oh, sheet. We've all, we've all had like the horror. He could be the next Joe Wicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so you sure it wasn't? You sure well it's done, mate. You're Joe. on the <laughs> right path. Yeah. Channel yeah. 4's going to snap you up soon. Yeah. <laughs> going to cookery well, show by well, We've all, we all, all heard the horror stories, you know, mm. nutrition, you know, diet diet plans printed off Google and copied and pasted, sent over and things like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's definitely some horror stories out there. But me and my training partner, we followed not follow this guy purposely, but we've, you know, watched him, watched him go, yeah. I don't do that anymore. Followed him home. Then, what yeah. are you watching now, mate? He's right. not around anymore. Yeah. So he'll, he'll have four or five clients. Anyway. He'll have four or five clients, and we know what exercise the clients do next, yeah. and the next one, and the next yeah. one. And yeah. guaranteed every time we're exactly right, because he yeah. does the exact same thing and again every yeah single time. it's one of those things again where you could go up and say something to him but someone of that personality is probably is probably yes, going to go over have. their head um <laughs> but eventually that will come back around to buy him uh, mm. in, in whatever way whether yeah. you know it's kind of leave question the guy yeah why are you paying him 35 quid to show you youtube yeah come train with us for a week we'll show you how to train properly. we'll show you how to train and yeah. he did and yeah we'll show you youtube <laughs> 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 yeah we'll show you our youtube yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah 100 yeah. percent. i mean to be fair it's about horror stories and i'm not going to name the gym because it all yeah it probably would no nah, i'm not going to name the gym just because i know people that i know two people that still work there so i'm what, not going to name the it gym rhyme, what does it rhyme with uh, i'm not going to play that game <laughs> um but basically when, when i was at this gym for a while i've worked at lots of different commercial gyms um and one of the four that i've worked at used to play the game of um stupid exercise game and i've told you this game. Mm. i love before. that game yeah. i love watching that game so basically what you do was <laughs> and i look back at it now and i'm like shit this was bad but what they used to do was if it was a boring day they would go right because basically People in commercial gyms watch the trainers when they train and copy what they do mm -hmm. with no idea as to why they're doing it. Now, we know this. So the aim of the game was you'd get as many people to do the most stupid exercises you could do just through copying. You wouldn't recommend it to them. So literally, they would go out on the gym floor and they would do some stupid shit and then count how many people copied them in the following days. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ones I ever saw was the lad went out and he did the karate kid the kick, like the cobra kick, oh, yeah. the with dumbbells stands. on a bozu ball. Love it. Right? Fair play. Sounds quite skilled. Within <laughs> hours, mm -hmm. there's an old boy in the corner <laughs> on a bozu ball with dumbbells about to kill himself. <laughs> yeah. And that sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah, that sums exactly, it up. Yeah. Because you are, you are responsible, not to quote the whole Spider-Man thing, but you are, yeah. with great power comes great responsibility. Absolutely, Whether yeah. you like it or not, you are a frigging role model mm. in that environment. Yep. Okay? That is how it works. Yeah. Even when the day comes when I'm not doing PT anymore or whatever, if I own the gym and I train in it on, on an hour of my day, people will watch what I'm doing because mm. I'm the guy that owns the gym. Mm, Therefore, there has to be a level of responsibility. But the game they used to play was the stupid exercise game. And the <laughs> stuff they used to get people to do will blow your mind. That is brilliant. How but this it, old uh, boy didn't break his ankle, I do not know. Because <laughs> he did not land on that bonus. <laughs> <ball. laughs> and, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. You, you've always got to walk around thinking, you know, I am wearing a badge of 
a personal trainer, which essentially, you know, most people look at as he clearly knows what he's doing because he's got that. Because mm. especially know. if you're in shape as well. Yeah. Uh, so people are always going to be looking over your shoulder, um, or looking at you, seeing what you're doing. You know, well, why is he doing it that way? Or you know, judging you in, in whatever sense. So I think you always have to be very responsible, like you said, with the actions you're taking and the kind of the example you're setting from your own actions, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Mm. So one. kind of now you're leaving it behind. Let's ask the question that everyone's intrigued about. Obviously, you've you've done online PT. You thought that you know online coaching. You've done physical PT. You've done gym floor work. You've, you've done lots of different things. And now you're about to leave it all behind. Yep. So, um, a was it everything you thought it was going to be? B did you ever earn as much money as you hoped you were going to earn? And C, why are you leaving it? I was about to ask that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go. We'll go into it, break those down because I'll only remember one at a time. So A was A. Well, let's just go. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just go for now. You're leaving, and you look back at your time online coaching. Was yeah. it everything you thought it was going to be? It, it's it's why we, we go just online coaching, not PT and everything. Well, else. no, because I mean, I, you know, I think I think realistically, PT is PT, and and we're all PTs when we say it. But you know, I've. I've had online clients before, but not as an advertiser as an online coach. I had clients that trained with me for years and then moved back to Canada. So I continued to train them for two months. Yeah. And I actually stopped doing it because I hated it. Mm. Right. Mm. But again, that's what, but for me to comment on that would be wrong. Drew's done it a lot longer. Yeah. So I think we'll stick to the online thing. Yeah, that's what I, th- I think for, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm quite a social person. I, I feed other people's energy. Um, was a bit of a class clown in school. So I always like being around people. So there's definitely that aspect of things I prefer. And so like online coaching never fulfills that. So you can be, you know, it's made to be a pretty picture, but the reality is you're, you're sat at home on your laptop all day. Yeah. And that's a pretty fucking boring place to be. Yeah. Um, so anyone thinking about getting into it, just be prepared for the lonely hours that you're... That you're we'll play a little Akon snippet over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. A little violin, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's that, and but there's also the fulfilling side of things that, you know, you're reaching people that maybe you've never been able to find your help before. Um, and it, Yeah, it can be fulfilling. You know, getting a client a result is getting a result. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the way you feed that back. Like, you can either watch someone get a PB... In, in, in the flesh and that's a pretty fucking awesome feeling when yep. clients just hit their personal best on something and you can feed off that you know fist bumps or or whatever that that looks like it's a tangible tangible energy exactly yeah, yeah. for sure whereas it's much, it's much different when someone whatsapp to you going saying oh I just hit a PB and you're like oh yes but that's it that's yeah, it yeah yeah that's mm-hmm. that, that, that's yeah so I've, I feel like you just have to be prepared for that and um, so yeah I, I've I've always preferred the face-to-face side of things, but the way kind of things are moving right now, online coaching for now for the next few months, and as you said, we're we're exploring different avenues from there. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And then the uh, yeah, and then the, the nitty gritty, the one that everyone wants to know. So you did it for a while. Financially, was it everything you hoped it would be? It, it, have you bought the Bentley? I haven't <laughs> bought the Bentley yet. No, uh, the deposit's on for the Lambo. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> so it, financially, it can be good. Um, and again, it, I would say everything I want it to be, not quite, but I, I take accountability in that, in the sense that you know we're st- we're still we're still grafting, we're still putting work into you know to scale things. And you know I've been working with a mentor now for the last few months, um, developing that repeatable, profitable system. Um, so hopefully, with a couple of things more in place, we can look to develop uh, and scale a lot more in the first couple of quarters of next year. So um, you know things, uh, and then this is another thing. I think like you know price charging point it is it, i wouldn't say fixed by the demographic but it's definitely capped at a certain point you know yes. london is is normal to charge 100 pound an hour in gloucester if you try charging that you'd probably mm. get stabbed yeah well you definitely get a few laughs along the way so and again with online depending on what your skill set is um you can reach those people who are maybe in london who are still you know the trainers will be the same but they're just charging more because that's what fits the demographic. That's what fits it, yeah. um, you know, that's what fits in the marketplace. So, you know, and, and that's with the online, you, you can charge those price points if you're, well, not even if you're offering enough value. Some people don't. But Some people yeah, charge it yeah. anyway. Uh, but that comes down to your own conscience, I think. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, looking to develop next year. And it, it's been it's been fulfilling. It, and I, I've, I've made more online from, from face to face. Yeah, you're yeah. just ready to leave it behind. Yeah, ready to step into my ideas, you know, and, and kind of discussion we had the other day. I think as a business owner, 
one of the thoughts in the back of your head is is always going to be what's the next step um you know it doesn't have to be a very big thought but it's always going to be a thought process of you know what's this what's this looking like in the next 5 10 15 20 years and if you're not thinking that then you definitely want to be you thinking that be. you need an exit strategy for oh, sure so you want to have the business in yeah. a year let alone yeah 20 i mean years. Do, yeah what does your exit strategy look like are you, are you selling the business to someone else are you are you going into a pension like you know are you going to use that money to invest into another business what does it look like and i think for me it's always the dream has always been and i think it's the same for most trainers it is to go into you know management of your own space um which works for some, works doesn't work for others. Like you've obviously made good success uh, success of it here, Ben. Um, so th that's a similar path I want to follow in sense of building a team, managing a team, um, building bricks and mortar, and and a community within that, um, and then developing that further down the line. So that that's you know that that's always the kind of position I've seen myself being in in the future, and using personal training as a stepping stone again to you know earn the stripes learn how things get developed learn how systems work learn the gym space the, what the commercial side of it looks like the do's and don'ts and you know even the things that we've maybe spoke badly of today i feel like are extremely valuable in themselves because it's now you know what to stay away from and if you didn't experience those then you don't don't pick up those lessons so um yeah. for like you know everything we have learned along the way is molded to the skill set you have today so definitely yeah. got to be uh, appreciative of that for sure learning where to walk isn't as valuable as learning where not to step yeah i like that a lot so yeah no, that's good that's good uh questions yeah so how many obviously you got a lot of say friends and people you know within your like you've got a lot of friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah how many of them go into the online community thinking right this is going to be it and how many of them do you know now that have tried it and have bugged it up and said right now I've got to go back to PT and how many do you know that have tried it and are still trying to be struggling to make ends meet um, that, that's a good question to be fair I, basically I, is there, is there a, have you got a larger have you got a larger success rate with your friends being online coaches or a failure rate basically I think you, my, my friendship circles are pretty small which is, which is the not way I, I always want it to be yeah, yeah not bad um, the, the people I know of, you know, I, lo I know a lot of people who have tried it, um, but more so with that hybrid approach of they've still remained to be a, a personal trainer. But if, they, if they've only got five clients in the gym, that's when they say, I want to go online instead because I'm going to get so many more clients. So it's like if, you've, if you're struggling to grow your business face to face, you're definitely going to struggle to grow it online. Um, but online is just a completely different world. Uh, so I know, yeah, probably a, a larger handful of people who have tried it still trying it and not getting much success with it um, and I know a couple of people an even smaller handful of people who have completely quit face to face PT and uh, they're still doing what they do so um, so yeah all props to them um, but yeah it's definitely a larger percentage of people who are still trying to make it work and, and not seeing that traction pick up. So what would you say the difference is between the people that succeed with it and the people that don't? If you could yeah, summarize that. That's also a good question. Uh, yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is, is is staying on the bus, keeping consistent. You know, like most PTs only stay within the industry for what I don't even know the stats, less than 18 months. By far. Yeah. Less industry than, average is, is barely a year. Yeah. And there's a reason for and that. And that's normally spread over two different locations. Yeah, there's a reason for that it's because it's fucking hard to get clients and we don't get taught how to market our services in a PT qualification, mm -hmm. right? So going back to what we said earlier, you can be the best PT, but you're not going to get any clients if you don't know how to market yourself put referrals into place and things like that so um to answer your question which was <laughs> going off on the tangent here <laughs> Fuck, I can't remember. Yeah. What's, the, what's the difference <laughs> between the ones that are successful ones, yeah ones that are yeah, successful yeah, 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 yeah so that's right yeah the, the successful people stay consistent with their marketing and their messaging you know uh and, and then within that they know who they're speaking to mm. so with the on you know with with the general kind of gym space on on the gym floor you, you've got 4,000 people you can go and speak to and, and pick from, whereas, you know, and they're all going to have different goals. You know, one's going to want to build muscle, you're going to have a female who just wants to, you know, t tone up, whatever that means, um, and things like that. Whereas the on, usual one just wants to be beasted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're going to have a mix of abilities there, but if you try passing that message on online, no one's going to fucking care. Like, you, if there's a saying that if you try and speak to everyone online, you speak to no one. That's because, again, going back to that attention span thing, unless you feel like 
you're being spoken to directly, it's not going to interest you. So you can talk about health, fat loss, weight loss, calorie deficits. It's been repeated millions of times. It's not going to fucking matter. Whereas if I said, um, are you a 26 year old man who's really low in confidence and don't, you know, don't feel like you're getting a break that you need? that's going to resonate with you a bit more if you are that person. And then where a lot of people go wrong is, you know, a lot of people going from PT to online will think, well, that's too specific. I'm like, no one's going to resonate with that. Like, well, that's exactly what you want. You don't want that to be general advice. You want one person to, to stick, like to read that and think you're speaking to them and then reach out to you because you related to them. And, and you know, they, they, you, then you build that know, like, and trust factor. So, um, definitely consistent mess consistent specific messaging is the is the way i see people being successful um and then invest in people who invest and people who realize the the importance and, and the value of investing in other people who have done it before you know you can in, in any business you know this is why mentors and coaches exist any business any walk of life if if there's someone who's done it before like how can you remodel that how can you learn from that person how can that how can that person help you move faster and not make the same mistakes that they did and they see people make all the time? Mm. So, yeah, the, the people I see are the most successful, stay consistent, they have a really clear and direct message and they invest in themselves. Uh, a in, lot in more the, resilient. In, in the form of mentors. Yeah, and resilience is a big thing. You know, you've got to be... You've got to be pretty tough when you're messaging numerous people a day and a small handful of those get back to you, then a small handful of the people you respond to get back to you again. And, you know, sometimes you do feel like you're talking to no one. Mm. Um, you've got to be re very resilient. You know, there's a lot of rejection in this industry. There's a lot of rejection in every industry. Um, so that's, again, where that consistency stays stays really important, where you just got to keep keep grinding, keep going at it. And, uh, you know, and you, it's, it's that snowball effect. You, you pick up the traction you build that momentum, you've got to keep building. You know, the more clients you get, the more referrals you get, the better your delivery is. And that's another thing we've not really touched on there is, is actually delivery of the services, like getting people results. You know, the successful coaches are, you know, if they're not getting people results, they're people who can be accountable and say, well, if I've not got this result for that person, it's not because of them not implementing it, it's because I haven't taught them the value of implementing it. So it's always, always comes down to you and the people I see are successful, are, they keep themselves accountable to that and yeah for sure what are your views on companies like peloton i, I think it again it, there's 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 a space for it in the marketplace you know there's people who don't want to leave their house who want to have that kind of virtual interaction it's not something i would recommend or or use personally um but you know like people live in high-rise buildings and things like that that, that that's their demographic you know because it's not cheap it's what like mm. two grand for a peloton yeah, bike and then you have to pay it then you've got to pay the subscription every month like yep. that is a very typical like that's a very particular type of person who's going to do that mm -hmm. um someone you said like based like you look to talk about demographic yeah someone who's based in london birmingham high-rise yeah. building and stuff yeah. like that not going to want to bring an elevator down a lot of flight of stairs. No, not yeah. One in there. yeah. Just to go to a spin class yeah, to come if, back if again. It's yeah, a bit more, it's a bit more convenient to have on yeah. your phone. So, yeah, I do, I do agree there is a market for it. Yeah. I do definitely agree with um, that. But then do you think that is purely because of the way they've marketed themselves? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, again, it's going to attract, to, you know, like you look at Les Mills classes and like you go to commercial gyms, there's a particular type of mm. person that does those classes. Mm. Um, and they've, they're there because they want that buzz. They want someone shouting. They want someone being their cheerleader. And I think that, you know, that's what you get in, in the space of your own living room with Peloton, isn't it? You get the, some American lady saying, you're stronger than you know it, and, and calling you <laughs> out. And, yeah, all, all of that nonsense. So, they uh, work. They yeah. do work. So, yeah, you get people who just absolutely thrive off that. Um, and then you get people who just who turn their nose up it. So, yeah, again, they've got a marketplace. And well, the way I always look at things, the same with kind of, you know, I have this discussion with, like, electric bikes. It, if... If that is your means to exercise and build your health up, then you know go for it. It's the same as like you might say instant coffees, shit. Like why are you drinking instant coffee? But if instant coffee is your gateway to better coffee down the line, mm. so that that's actually going to serve pretty well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, yeah. So we agree with Drew. Public notice. We agree with Drew until the moment he mentioned instant <laughs> coffee. <Yeah. laughs> um, so yeah, like hey, saying like a, a, one. <laughs> with, with, coffee aficionados with like a, with electric bikes. If, if that's your means to get out and experience what that is like, and then you know you build the fitness to go up to a normal bike or with the peloton. If if that's your means to actually exercise each day, then you know 
Yeah. Everyone needs or, a gateway mechanism. Yeah, yeah. No matter what it is in their life. We talk yeah. about stocks and shares. That's eToro for most people. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. A, a gateway mechanism for most things is uh, is useful for, for culture in general. Yeah. Mm, we need cool. gateway mechanisms. Things can't be completely inaccessible. There must be a way for people to have that breakthrough moment. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, you know, most people probably buy a Peloton. I, I know three people off the back of my hand who have bought one and not fucking used it. And it's collecting cobwebs. Yeah. And they clearly got too much money than cents. So, yeah, my personal opinion would be that two grand in subscription you're spending on a Peloton, would you be better off investing that into a trainer for the same price? Yeah. To, 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 you know, to give you that advice, to be there, to support you, to give you that accountability, yeah. not just for the 45-minute session you're going to do twice a week, but yeah. every day. I have uh, an ex-training partner from Weymouth. Um, really nice guy. I've got a lot of time, a lot of respect for him. But he's come away from the gym completely and lost all of his bulk, all of his muscle, and now he just does Peloton, that's all he does. And cold water, ice water dips. Oh yeah, that's what that he is. does. Fair play. Yeah. Ice bath. That's maths, yeah. 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 The so ice bath company, I've been trying to get one with their giveaways for weeks. Someone oh. watches this, <laughs> I'd like one. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's good PR. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, you can never, you know, the importance of muscle mass, you know, there's, there's continuous research coming out as to why strength training is important in, in any age of population. Mm. Um, no matter who you are. So I think you can never replace actually adding resistance to the body. And Peloton's not going to do that. No. For no. sure. I mean, he, to, to be fair to, the, to him, uh, you know, he looks really good. He's in great shape. Um, for him, we, we have talked about it for him. He says it's more of a mental thing. Yeah. That, he, that he's come away from the weights completely. Um, and there's been a lot of things going on in his life. He knew he needed to do something to keep keep his brain active and That's to sort it, of yeah. give him that drive. You know, he, he's a car salesman, which I can't imagine is particularly great as a career at the moment. <laughs> oh, we won't hold it against him, but no. you know, well, other, say, other careers are available. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I've got a lot of, lot of time and respect for this guy. Um, when we were training together, he was he was a strong lad. Mm. Uh, and you know, He was big and bulky and in really good shape with it. He could have competed. Never wanted to go down that route. Hmm. Um, blame him. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a different work. conversation, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, so now he does literally, he's Peloton, I think he's doing four classes a week. Hmm. I think he does the the weights version of it as well. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And the, um, you know, he lives right on the beach, so he's in the water every day. Happy day. That's it, though, there's cultural years. factors. If he lives right near the beach, I can understand that there's cultural factors with products that can't be ignored. Isn't mm. there really? And actually, mm. they you know that's a huge part of that that user story and why that product's relevant to him. There's cultural yeah. factors that we can't. You could just go and buy a spin bike for a hundred quid and, yeah. and yeah. have the same thing without the screen of American people shouting. You, you got it, or you could yeah. just yeah combine the two with a spin bike in YouTube, couldn't you? But no, I mean there's cultural factors we can't ignore. It's, it's, it's always going to be regardless of whatever route you go down, whether it's hybrid, whether it's endurance, whether it's weightlifting, bodybuilding, stuff like that. It's always going to be a double-edged sword. There's always going to be a, oh, yeah. a, a point where you're going to go, right, this is started as a healthy hobby. Now, I've been the same with bodybuilding. You've done it as well. Started off as a healthy habit, went straight into being an unhealthy habit, and mm -hmm. you start having issues with that. Oh, yeah. I think with a lot of the things, a lot of people, I think this is where Peloton comes in as well, they use it as a means to tick a box. Yeah, mm. uh, the user is a means to say right. Same with a lot of why some clients have PTs. The mm. user is a means to tick a box and say right, I've done that for the week. Yeah. Don't need to worry about that anymore because they know for a fact they wouldn't do it if yeah. it wasn't for that PT or that bike. Yeah. So yeah. having that session plan, why some people go into classes, having that class plan to say right, I've done it now. Don't need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so yeah, yeah it's a big thing I say to my clients is intent without action is just a pipe dream, and action without intent is just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, like you said, so many people will show up to tick a box, but then you need to look at how you showed up. Yeah. I would say like the the racetrack analogy, you can you can drive around a racetrack and say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm racing, but you know, how fast did you do it? Are you actually getting record times? Did you did you put your foot down? Did you change gears? Did you actually do it with intent? Like you can't just go around expecting to get a good result mm. you know you've actually got to put the effort in behind yeah. it as well to see that result um but yeah, we talked about this in the last sure. episode of the sales guy didn't we mm. purpose and execution yeah yeah terminology that people like was, to say but it's crazy understand. how a lot of it 
well, it translates into itself. Like we spoke about um, today, obviously, with the clients coming in and going and stuff like that. In the previous podcast we spoke about like the, the feast and famine concept where there is dips and... Oh, it's all waves. interlinked. Yeah, it's, it's all it's relevant. All, it's just it's crazy to see how something that can translate into so many different industries mm. all translate in, into one big thing. And the principles are always there. Yeah. And that's what this is about, isn't it? Just chatting to different people, different stories, and noticing those universal concepts. Mm. Like, I mean, you know, like, we, I, I have a massive book collection, and I'm a voracious reader, and I'm always giving people books or recommending books. And one of my favorite books of all time is Principles by Ray Dalio. And again, those of you that know who Ray Dalio is, I won't give everyone, won't bore anyone with it, but Principles is one of the most important books I've ever written, in my opinion, because actually... It is effectively an encyclopedia of exactly what we're on about. It's the intrinsicities of you know, everything is interlinked, mm. and the concept of how those principles are interlinked. It's a fantastic book, but that's what this podcast is. Mm. Does it Different explain stories. why people panic by fuel? Right, it explains. <laughs> it explains everything. So again, that's it, isn't it? Once you get one concept, you yeah. get why humans perform that way in everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, we are. We yeah. We're uh, we're fairly. Fairly shocking beast, but actually we're relatively easy to understand if yeah. you break it down. Yeah. So yeah, 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 books like that are really useful. But no, this is where this podcast comes in. We speak to different people and it's fun, isn't it? Because we do pick up those trends and those threads that run mm. through everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. I guess, because um, we haven't got that much time left. So I guess like, you know, we'll just quick fire. Um, let's just finish on what's the best thing about online coaching? The thing you're going to miss? What's the worst thing about it? The thing so you're are, not you going to miss? So are leaving online coaching for good then? And PT for good to pursue this role? Or are you... So, so my goal and, and ambitions, we'll see how this plays out, is to, to scale the online business to a point where I can bring another coach on board and kind of hand the reins over and work on the business as opposed to in the business as much as what I am now um, and I think with, with any stepping stone in business that there, there's going to be a, a bit of apprehension around handing the reins over and taking uh, you know taking my control away and giving that to someone else uh, so my yeah my ambition is to scale that to a point I can hand the reins over to another coach um, or even a small team of people depending on what that looks like financially um, and then move into the yeah move into the management side of things. Well, this is in in the background, and I'll you know dip in and out of things as and when it's needed to you know develop systems, make sure everyone's everyone's kind of performing key key uh, key tasks and things like that. Um, and then Ben, best thing and worst thing. The be- best thing, thing I'd you'll say miss is thing you won't. Be- the best thing is kind of a twofold. So I'd say one is is being able to connect with you know like speak to clients in America and uh, Australia, and, and that's awesome to 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 think that I'm changing someone's life across across Half the uh, Atlantic world, Ocean. Yeah, yeah mm. is is uh is, is pretty spectacular. Um, and there's only going to be more of that as we you know keep progressing with technology and things like that. So that's so that's a pretty um, pretty amazing thing and then also just the freedom of it as well um, you know having worked on the gym floor you, you're working around people's schedule you're you're working when other people aren't working so you're, you're doing your 6 a.m 7 a.m 8 p.m 8 a.m sorry and then you're working the evening time so you know that that's a that's a tough that's tough hours to manage for anyone so I think for me the online coaching kind of stepping away from that and being able to have more control of your diary um, and, and where you are and the hours you put in is is a uh, is is a lot more attractive to me. Not to you know I've I've never been a massive morning person. Not to say I didn't do them because I definitely did. Uh, you know I had my fair share of six a.m. starts in the gym, finishing at ten p.m. being back in the next day. Uh, and it, it's pretty gruesome. Um, so I think those are the two main benefits that I see. And then the worst part about it has to be just the hours behind the screen and the constant you know i'm not a fan of being on my phone but it's it's a, it's a necessary evil in the world of online coaching um you know the multiple rejections you face each day the you know the content creation constantly being on your phone in the dms chatting to people um dealing with melts people you know you people asking you for 20 pound training plans um things like that which you know there's always going to be the pros and cons of any business you run so that's just something that you got to ask yourself can you deal with yes keep doing it no it's not a thing for you um and that's something i can deal with but that's that's definitely one of the caveats and nuances to, to online coaching for sure yeah <laughs> yeah cool i think we're probably if you've got one quick yeah, question, one question. That'd be a quick you, one. sorry how do you value your time 
in the sense of what you give to customers, what you keep for yourself, what you give to your partner. That's that's always a tricky one. I am always trying to manage. To be fair, and I think there's never going to be a permanent solution because mm. you know thing, things are changing all the time, right? Um, so I, I value my time personally over, but you know, much higher than anything else because I always like saying you can't pour from an empty cup, and if I'm not showing up for myself, how can I expect myself to show up for other people? Um, so you know, the mornings will look like my routine my time where I get my head right try, I won't respond to clients until I'm ready um, try and stay off social media um, and then you know between you know sort of morning afternoon hours that's when it's client delivery I'm giving my best self to other people mm. um, and then in terms of relationship again that's always a tricky one I'm trying to manage I'll say one thing Kira will tell you another thing um, but you know that's very much you know evening times you know if we're finishing at 8 o'clock getting home by half 8 that, that's then phones off laptops mm. down it's our time to mm. you know really appreciate each other um and the same on the weekends as well so um you know saturday afternoon onwards is our time where we you know we try and you know do as much as we can together um because again you know if 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 you're not using that freedom to serve yourself then why are you doing it in the first place mm. you know yeah, and, sure. and many people you know you guys are all business owners it's an easy trap to fall into. Oh, I'm self-employed. I control my own hours, and now I'm working more hours and actually <laughs> doing more work. So, um, you know, I don't work Sundays, and I said, like, why would I become self-employed and want to work on Sundays? And sometimes, yeah, there's going to be weeks where it will be necessary, of course. Um, you know, particularly for you, Steve, there's going to be events on Sundays. You're going to have to work, and you know, it'll be silly not to, and yeah. you know, owning the gym and things like that. But you have to have boundaries around that time, I think. And if you if you don't respect those boundaries, you end up spinning your wheels, getting burnt out, getting frustrated, getting tired, showing up to sessions with low energy, not thinking straight, and just you, you, you're not serving anyone to you know your best self. So you got to be selfish to be selfless in my eyes. I think mm. for sure. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. Sweet, mate. Yep. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for pleasure. drinking the whiskey coffee. Absolutely. Um, you, am I yeah. safe to drive home? Oh, oh yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. Um, yeah, mixed review for the whiskey coffee. But hey, mm. we'll let Steve handle that conversation. I shall hang my head in shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, no, good. this is the whole point. We try things, yeah. we like things, we don't mm. like others. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for much. having an honest discussion, the good, the bad, the ugly, about online coaching. I'm sure lots of people enjoyed it yeah. um, and lots so. of people found it insightful. So pretty much, guys, that yeah. is uh, that episode. Yeah, it's good yeah. to actually sit and chat with you rather than waving across the gym. Like yeah, normally do. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that dude absolutely. in the cap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. So yeah, thank you. Right, cool awesome. guys. That's it. Episode five. We're done.